All right, here we go. This is the recording for how to do a drawing file. And you're going to do a drawing file for each of your parts that you made on SolidWorks. So we're going to go into SolidWorks, and this time we're going to open a new file. We've already done part files. We've already done assembly files. Now we're going to do drawing files. Okay, so we'll say, all right. And these are basically the blueprints for how to make your... Um, your project. So they should all be listed here, all the different types of files. Now these are all different sizes of paper. Now size A is your standard sheet of paper, which is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. It's listed here in millimeters, but it is a standard piece of paper. Uh, size B, C, D, and E are, are bigger than that where E is, is a very large poster size. It's like three feet by four feet or something. Uh, we don't want to do that. If you're not seeing these values as A, B, C, D, and E, if you're seeing them as something else, it usually means that one of these options is not selected the way it's supposed to be. So make sure that you're at standard sheet size and they have little checks in these boxes right here. Okay, so we'll say yes, we're going to do a landscape size A's, although you could do portrait, and for some of your shapes you may opt to do that. So I'm going to say all right, and it's going to bring in all this default uh, stuff into the... the under the sheet. It's a bunch of information. We'll talk about that more explicitly later. What all information goes in there and what do you need to be concerned about for right now? You don't need to be concerned about any of it. Uh, but you see it, it did name it. This is going to be drawing two. I actually made drawing one just a couple minutes ago and it's the size A, the scale one to one. So I'm going to then go into browse and if model view is not available then we would just go into view layout and here's model view right here. And we're going to go browse, and I'm going to go find my parts. Now, I saved all my parts under the desktop, but hopefully you have yours in your cube project file. So I'm going to go ahead and do my most complex part. It's this pink one that I called FOB because it was the one that I used uh, for the rapid prototyper. So it's bringing in, and you can see over here, it's, it's going to bring in the front view. Remember, here's front, top, oh, sorry, bottom. They, see, SolidWorks says it a little different. They put the bottom here, top down here. The left, uh, the right over here, and the left on the right side, and then you got your back view right here. So what they call a front view, I'm going to go ahead and click and bring it in right there. Now what it does is it automatically goes into projected view, and you can see that if I move off to any of the sides or any of the the angles, the diagonals, it's going to project that view. Now what I really want to get is the right side view and the top view, but because SolidWorks projects them mirror images of that, I'm actually going to go ahead and come over to the left. I'm going to click once, and I'm going to come down here and click once, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, say, uh, hit the green check. So what it did, even though this is on the bottom, this is actually a top view, so now I'm going to grab it, I'm going to bring it up to the top view where it actually belongs, and I'm going to bring the, what was projected over here on the left side. I'm going to bring it over on the right. I'm not sure exactly why SolidWorks says that, but this is how I'd like to see it laid out. So you've got a front view with a top view perfectly lined up, and then a right side view perfectly lined up over here. Now, I would also like these to display hidden lines, and they're not right now. They're just doing what's called wireframe, where the hidden lines are removed. Um, and so I'm going to click on this one where hidden lines are visible. Uh, so if I click on this view and say visible, all right, so you see the only one that they actually popped in, there were no hidden lines in either of these, but there were hidden lines here, and it's because my little loop was underneath. I couldn't see it, so now it's displayed with hidden lines, okay? So we'll say all right to that. Now, I also on an isometric view. These are great for the manufacturing, the actual showing the dimensions, but an isometric view is the nicest one to look at. So I'm going to go up to view layout again, and I'm going to say model view. Actually, you know what? Let's just go to projected view. We're just going to project this view. And we're going to say, from this front view, we want to project an isometric. So you come up and to the right, not straight to the right and not straight up. But if you come up and to the right, it's going to project that isometric. And I just click once. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to tell it, um, actually, I just say, go ahead and say OK. And it'll end that. Then come select that isometric view and come over here and we're going to tell it to be shaded with edges. So when I do that, now I can actually see it. And that's the only view we're going to do that with. I'm going to move it over into this nice little space right here. Because uh, that's easy to look at for, for just any old person that's not necessarily an engineer. Looking at this image is the easiest way for them to see, okay, what does this part actually look like? But the reality is the dimensions on these are going to be the most useful. So that's what we're going to do right now. We can go ahead and close this. And we're going to go up to annotation. And we're going to select Smart Dimension. 
And now this is the trick. I don't expect you to be perfect with this right now, but using these three what are called orthographic views, that means two-dimensional, these three orthographic views, we're going to put in any of the dimensions that we would need to know, that somebody else would need to know to recreate our part exactly. So for example, what was the total height of this? I'm going to click on the top line, click on the bottom line, and it was two and a quarter. All right, well, what was the width of this? It was 0.75. And what was the height of this guy? 0.75. What was the total width of this piece? 1.5. And you don't want to be redundant. So I wouldn't go put in 0.75 here again and say, oh, this is 0.75 also, because that's exactly the same thing as this, and that would be redundant to do that. So we're going to delete that dimension off. So I've got the total height, I've got the height of the bottom part, I've got the total width, and I've got the width of the skinnier part. Um, now what I don't have on here yet is depth, which it may, it may not be obvious to you that it's not listed since it's kind of the same dimensions that you're already seeing over here, but it actually wouldn't be. This is just height and width. You would have to go to one of these two views to get depth. Okay, so those six dimensions give me everything I need to know to create this part except for the loop. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to this circle. If I click on it there, now I can put in a diameter. It was a quarter inch diameter that I used for this loop. Now the rotation of 180 degrees is not something that's easy to put on here, so we're not going to worry about it right now. Um, but you could go in and let's put a little note and say um, loop was a 180 degree rotation. All right. And now we've got that. And what we could do then to connect that over is use what's called a, a leader line. Um, and let's see if I can find that. I'm not seeing that on here, so maybe we won't worry about it. But anyways, that loop right there ideally would be, oh, I think it's going to give me the arrow if I just click right there and put it down. All right, so let me then see if I can delete my other note. Huh. All right. Well, I'm going to work on deleting that. Anyways, that is what it's supposed to look like, except that I'm making it look really bad right now with all my extra notes that I'm putting in. Oh, I think I just need an X out of there. Okay, so you just have to hit the X, and then you can uh, get rid of the extra ones. All right, so there you go. If you end up with something like that, that's a great little drawing file. You will screenshot this, put it into your Google Doc, and you'll do that for each of your pieces. All right, once you've got all five or six pieces, done on a drawing file, and put on your Google document, call me over for the grade check.